Hello, I'm Doug Jones from Michelin North America. In our continuing effort to promote safety and education in the tire and trucking industries, we've partnered with the Tire Industry Association to bring you an important message. In this video, we're going to look beyond tires and focus on an integral area of fleet maintenance, the wheel end. Our goal is to help drivers and fleet maintenance personnel conduct effective wheel end inspections to prevent runaway wheels or wheel loss and other incidents. When an inflated tire assembly is separated from a vehicle in motion, it becomes a 200 pound unguided missile. In this instance, the outer tire actually picks up speed and crosses under the trailer, which places it directly in the path of oncoming traffic. While the inside tire travels in the opposite direction. As you can see, the potential for an accident extends to both sides of the vehicle. The safety risks also include fires that can occur when the wheel bearings or brakes are neglected or improperly maintained. Perhaps the most dangerous aspect of a wheel end fire is that it can quickly burn through the floor of a trailer and ignite the cargo. While there are a number of factors that may cause any of the components on the wheel end to fail, preventative measures by drivers and maintenance personnel can reduce the risks of wheel offs and wheel end fires. It all starts with the pre- or post-trip inspection that every driver is required to conduct. According to Federal Motor Carrier Regulation 396.11, driver inspection reports must cover at least the following components and accessories. Service brakes, including trailer brake connections, parking or handbrake, steering mechanism, lighting devices and reflectors, tires, horn, windshield wipers, rear vision mirrors, coupling devices, wheels and rims, and emergency equipment. Remember, drivers can be prosecuted for failing to perform a CDL-compliant inspection or falsifying an inspection form. It's up to drivers to protect themselves and the motoring public by inspecting the entire vehicle before it goes into service and at the end of the workday. During the pre- or post-trip inspection, drivers should inspect the entire wheel end, including the tire, the wheel, the studs and fasteners, the hub area, and the brakes. Every tire should be checked for proper inflation and tread depth, and then inspected for any unserviceable conditions, such as excessive tread wear and broken or exposed steel cords. If any tire is found with air pressure below 80% of the operating pressure, or if the tread depth is below legal tread depth limits, remove the vehicle from service until the tire is repaired or replaced. After checking the tires, look for any loose, damaged or missing wheel fasteners. If any rust stains, streaks or fresh scuff marks are present around the nuts or studs, the fasteners may be loose. The best practice is to remove the vehicle from service until the proper torque has been checked and confirmed. The next area to inspect is the hubcap. If the hubcap appears loose or damaged, it must be repaired before the vehicle can be returned to service. If the hubcap is missing, do not attempt to move the vehicle. The oil inside the hubcap minimizes friction between the bearing and the hub. Without oil, the friction becomes excessive, but the airflow during operation actually reduces the amount of heat at the axle end. After stopping the vehicle for a period of time, sometimes up to an hour, the heat buildup may lead to a wheel end fire. One of the first signs of a potential fire is the appearance of smoke around the tires and brakes after the vehicle is stopped. If the amount of smoke emitting from the wheel end does not dissipate, or if the smoke appears to increase, a fire is possible. The best practice is to contact emergency services immediately. If the tractor can be safely detached from the trailer, separate the units. However, personal safety should always take precedent over protecting the vehicle and its contents. Safety must be the driver's first priority. When a wheel end causes the tires to ignite, a driver's first reaction may be to try and extinguish the fire with a dry powder chemical extinguisher. Drivers should know that the rubber in truck tires has a heating value of 15,000 BTUs per pound, which is similar to petroleum fires. For that reason, tire fires cannot be controlled with a single dry powder fire extinguisher. 
Avoiding a wheel end fire starts with the driver's pre or post trip inspection. Look for any evidence of oil leaks around the hubcap, axle flange gasket, wheel seal or fill plug. If any leaks are found, the vehicle must be taken out of service until the source can be identified and repaired. The oil level and condition of the oil must also be checked during the inspection. If the oil level is low, or if the oil appears to be discolored or contaminated with water, metal particles, or other foreign material, the vehicle must be immediately removed from service. Finally, inspect the areas on the inside of the rims for any evidence of lubricant or leaking oil. As a driver, the ability to stop the vehicle can be the difference between life and death, so every pre-trip inspection must include the braking system. The first step is to check the reservoirs for any broken bands or loose mounting hardware. If the drain cock is leaking air in the closed position, or the air will not drain when the drain cock is open, remove the vehicle from service until the problem is corrected. Next, check the brake chambers for any broken or loose mounting hardware. If the push rods appear to be rubbing on the housing or the push rods are bent, they must be repaired before returning the vehicle to service. Slack adjusters must also be inspected to ensure they are the same size, model, and manufacturer across the axle and have the correct operating stroke according to CVSA and DOT regulations. The final area of the brakes that must be checked is the brake drum or rotor. If the brake drum or rotor is cracked or otherwise damaged, it must be replaced before the vehicle can be operated. Drivers should visually inspect the foundation brakes for broken parts, missing lining block, cracks or voids at the edge of the lining block, or any leaking seals that lead to an oil-soaked block. If any of these conditions are present, the vehicle must be immediately removed from service. By properly inspecting the tires and wheel ends during every pre-trip inspection, drivers can comply with federal regulation and make the highways safer for themselves and other motorists. A wheel off or wheel end fire can occur when any component on a wheel end is poorly maintained. Wheel bearings, lug fasteners, studs, and brake components must be regularly inspected and included in a preventive maintenance program. When properly maintained, wheel ends can last for the life of the vehicle, but when they are neglected, wheel end failure is unpredictable with catastrophic results. To properly inspect a wheel end, the first step is to park the vehicle on a level surface, block the wheels, and lift the axle. Release the jack and secure the axle with jack stands of sufficient load carrying capacity. With the brakes released, rotate the wheel and check for free, smooth, and quiet rotation. Next, remove the fasteners and the wheels. For most Class 8 trucks and trailers, there are currently three types of hub wheel bearing systems available. Manually adjusted bearings, pre-adjusted bearings, which are often marketed under the name Preset or LMS, and unitized bearings. In order to properly service and install the various types of wheel ends, it is important to identify the bearing system on the vehicle and to follow the service recommendations for that particular wheel end system. Hubs with manually adjusted bearings should be installed per TMC RP618. Hubs with pre-adjusted bearings and unitized hubs have product-specific service and installation procedures. On standard manually adjusted bearings, remove the hub cap or the drive axle. Use a dial indicator to measure the wheel bearing end play. If the end play is above the hub manufacturer's recommended maximum tolerance, service the wheel end per the hub manufacturer's recommendations. If the end play is within specifications, reinstall the hub cap or drive axle and then install the proper lubricant. On outboard assemblies, remove the brake drum and carefully inspect it for any cracks or damage. It is also important to inspect the wear indicators to ensure there is sufficient brake lining. Before reinstalling the brake drum, Inspect the hub and make sure the pilot pads on the hub and the mating surfaces between the brake drum and the hub are clean and free of any rust, dirt, paint or corrosion. 
The best practice is to use a wire brush to clean all of the mating surfaces and remove any traces of foreign material. Failure to adequately remove all of the debris will permit the corrosion to continue. All abrasive residues should be removed with a clean shop towel. Do not use acid or other highly corrosive material to clean the hub polyps or mating surfaces. These materials promote further corrosion if they are not completely removed.